Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Ultima 7. All right, we are about to undergo one of the uh, three trials. Is it going to be truth, love, or courage? I think we will go with truth. The Shrine of Truth speaks. Greetings, Seeker. Once again, I ask thee, dost thou seek my enlightenment? Yes, I do. Very well. Prepare thyself. The voice falls silent. Alright, well, um... I suppose I could, uh, try translating these. Where am I, uh, let's see. I've got the, uh... That is another one of the nice things about Exalt, is that there's an automatic translate thing in that, in it. Because there's a translate spell in, uh, um... Uh, Ultima 7 Part 2, but, uh, let's see. Um... O N. I'm guessing that's going to be uh, yeah only. I wish I remember. I, I wish I could remember these again. I used to be able to read this pretty well, but. Uh, that has uh, atrophied over time a bit. Only appearances. Only appearances are deceptive. And truth is truth. Only appearances are deceptive. Okay, does that mean... Yeah, that just means that we walk right through that wall. Interesting how uh, being in the wall uh, allows you to see outside. Uh, incidentally, this is... Uh, this right here is the... Uh, um, the path that we came in. This is one of those towers that we saw in the uh, um, entrance. Let's go ahead and turn that on for no reason. Alright, so I believe we do not want to walk through the uh, the X there. Oh my. Trophy. That's a head. It's a human head. That's a daemon head. Or not a daemon head, a, uh, a gargoyle head. And a troll head. Uh, you know what? What happens if we, uh, if we do that? Oh. It's just lightning. Psh. Now let's go ahead and load it, though, because, uh, let's not take damage if we can help it. Alright, so, uh, I remember back in the day, so there was this hood here, um... That'll open up as you come close. And that'll lead you onto this uh, lengthy passage where you can get all these uh, um, interesting items and stuff. But this is actually what you're supposed to do. Only appearances are deceptive. Lock it. Boom. Thou hast mastered the test of truth and so a boon of great intellect and magical ability will be bestowed upon thee. Use and respect thy powers well, Avatar. Ooh, thou hast now experienced the full meaning of the principle of truth. The value of such is beyond measure, for truth shall guide thee throughout thy life's endeavors. The statue's voice takes on a warning tone. Know this truth, the psyche returns to the core. With that said, with that said, the statue becomes quiet once more. Ooh, mana and intelligence and magic are all at thirty. Ooh, spiffy. 
Salutations, Avatar. I can assist thee no more, but remember my words. The psyche returns to the core. Hmm. Sounds bad. Sounds bad. But, uh... We uh, do have uh, that locket. We still have our pouch there. Good. All right. Well, there is something that we can do with this uh, locket right now. This is fun. I love doing this. Like, put that right there. Okay. Well, so that was an easy uh, um, test. Um, probably at some point I'm going to, uh, um, oops, I don't want to do that, uh, I wanted that one. Um, modify NPC, one, I think that's us, no, that isn't. Are we zero? Um, yeah, I think we're zero. No, wait. Uh, let's see, what is it? Um, number ID. No, oh, yeah, we are. Okay. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Do not have six. We got seven and eight. Neat. Modify NPC. Zero. All right. I'm looking for... Where is it? Oh, NPC status? Yes, that's it. Alright, so in here, um, we've got Ethereal. I'll do that eventually, not now. Um, it's more uh, when when uh, I get to a point where we're about to uh, complete the game and it's just like, let's have a little bit of fun before we complete the game. And I'll just wander through that entirely. There is this enormous maze on this island that's all the uh, um, test of truth. And you... you don't have to do it at all. That's... It's terrible. It really is terrible. I remember having so many problems with that back in the day. Um, go ahead and exit out. Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead and turn off uh, uh, number ID. Okay. Let us do the test of love next. I welcome thee again, Seeker. I cannot aid thee until thy successful completion of the test of love. Alrighty. Well, that would be the one down here. You can see this little, uh, looks like a button right there. That's a surefire sign that, uh, there's a secret door there. Might have pointed that out earlier. The test of love. Well, let's go in. Huh. There is a well there, uh, which I believe... Oh. That was fun. Thank you for that uh, earthquake. Let's go ahead and take the bucket. There's a hole in my bucket. Let's make sure that. It... Wait a second. Who picked up? Who picked up the bucket? Who got the bucket? Bucket. There we go. Uh, I am going to need this hammer at some point, so I picked that up. Let's see what we have. Logbook. Astelleron. I have grown lonely here on the island. Despite my golems, I have no one with whom I can converse. No one with any personality. Even the animals spend less time here than on, my, on the main island. Each day I look upon the horizon for, sign, for a sign of someone. I have no fear of strangers, for either I will meet the avatar or the golems I created to protect the shrines will fend off hostile visitors. I am exhilarated. Today, while on the main island, I happened by a tree. While this is not inherently odd, I noticed that the tree seemed to grow out of the... Out, not out of the ground, but from a large rock. Equally unusual was the five stones surrounding it, each located at the same distance from each other and from the center stone. They looked much like they could represent vertices on a five-pointed star. And then I realized to what I was a witness, the legendary stone of Castambre. Even had I not noticed the tree of life springing forth from the boulder, the pentacle of rocks gave all away. The first test was a success. 
I used a pick to chip away a bit of the stone. I was startled at first by the bleeding, but as I heard not a whit of any sound indicating pain, I continued. I am about to confer with the book to determine my next action. I am afraid I will have the have little time to continue this journal for the moment. I realize that a true scientist would record daily with the utmost accuracy what he has done and witnessed, but the amount of work each day requires leaves me long past the point of exhaustion. I have done it! My newest two golems can actually speak! And they offer original comments, not mere echoes of my own thought. The instructions in the book are correct. Bollocks, my first attempt, succeeded. But my inexperience left him a little less intelligent than I would have preferred. However, his brother, Adjar, benefited from my mistake with the other, and has full speech capabilities. As I sit now writing this, I can hear them discussing weather. I must go now and talk with them. Oddly enough, the sky no longer seems overcast. Huh. Fascinating. Golems from Clay to Stone by Castadon. Stone golems can be created from any hard rock. However, it is important to note that the enchantments require they, they be anthropomorphic in shape. Any other construct, or an incomplete one, will not be able to s hold the creature together or permit locomotion. Once a sufficient amount of stone has been gathered and placed roughly in the shape of a man, thou must cast the Vasral Ilum spell, see Appendix QQ for spell description, to form the rock into a person. Needless to record, perhaps, the creature will barely resemble anything human, but will be able to function similarly. The next enchantment is Kalmani, Appendix QQ. This will breathe life into the newly created golems, or rather, breathe animation into them. Once created, each golem will have enough rudimentary intelligence to obey and respond to three single word commands, or one extensive request of any length. Uh, incidentally, so, all of the, uh, the words of power have, uh, um, meaning, so let's see. Um, Cal is summon or invoke, and Mani is life healing, so yeah, summon, summon life. Appendix K, the Stone of Castambre. This mythological rock has legendary powers that permits one to shape and enchant stone, and only stone, to create golems, by following only a single short ritual instead of the lengthy and time-consuming process described in previous chapters. Though the stone's existence has never been confirmed, there are also other purported powers that could make a ris risky investigation quite worthwhile. For additional information, see the Stone of C Castambre by Makuth. Well, let's see what's in this uh, chest. Ooh, bandage. We will take that. Always need the bandages. Always take the bandages. Uh, it looks like there is nothing else in here. Oh. Debris and a tombstone. Uh, that would be here lies. Um, of course, it changed the page. Uh, here lies... Bell... Belovum? Oh, Beloved. It's gotta be Beloved. Yeah, okay. I looked at the wrong letter. Uh, here lies beloved, uh, um, father. And... Master? Yeah. Here lies, be here lies beloved father and master. Oh, interesting. Well, it's probably the guy who wrote the, uh, the book there. We got a door over here. Let's see what we have back here. Stuff to loot? No. Stuff to loot? No. Stuff to loot? No. Alright, well, um, those can be looted. Um. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'll take those along. Oh my. Uh, we'll look at him in a moment. It looks like we could actually get our, uh, um, magic carpet in here. 
Sup? Hey, what's up? You don't mind me uh, walking over the this uh, broken golem here, do you? It does say body. The stone statue stands with the lowered head. Despite its granite features, a downcast look is apparent on its face. Surprisingly, it turns to speak with you. Why, by the stars, I believe it is a creature. Help him? Oh no, it's Tor Johnson! It asks carefully, pointing to the fallen statue lying beside it. Uh... Name? My master named me Bollocks. Job? I am a guardian of the shrines of the principles. Um... Master? Astellaron made us. He is our master. Guardian. We were created to protect the shrines of the principles. Only the Avatar should use their power. Adjar and I were keeping watch when the wall fell on Adjar, and the loud noise came. I carried him here so that I could restore him, but I do not know how. Maid? I know nothing about the process, but Astelleron once told me he used something called magic to give us life and animation. The golem pauses, obviously conscious of his next thought. He did not like his solitude. He said he was lonely. Uh, tell me about magic. I do not know what it is, but there are many books in his house. Perhaps there is something there about magic. Uh, lonely? Astelleron said it was how... A person feels when no one is around. He told us how happy he felt after we were born. He called me a son. Uh, what can you tell me about the books? I have a book here that Adjar said told about our creation. This might help bring Adjar back. He hands to you a very old tome. It is evident the book has seen much use. For the leather covering it's wearing... Uh, for the leather, leather covering is wearing away to reveal the wood beneath and the pages are quite dog-eared. I already put rocks down, he adds, just like the book said to. Uh, help? My companion, Adjar, he is dying. Thou must help repair him. Please, I beg thee. Uh, creature? We are called stone golems, because we are made out of stone and rock. Transmute stone to rock. Great spell there. Great spell. Adjar? He is my brother and my friend. We protected the shrines together. We cannot let him stay like that. Help me assist him. Uh, stone? We were fashioned out of the rock from the quarry on this small island. Alright, goodbye. Goodbye. Alrighty, so we have a book. I stole my bag in there, good. Alright, looks like that I have fixed that problem. The Stone of Castambre by Makuth. Legendary rock? Perhaps. Powerful relic? Definitely. The Stone of Castambre, named for the mage who is rumored to have enchanted and placed it, is said to be located on the island Isle of Fire, also the location of the sh shrines of the Three Principles. Of course, since knowledge of the isle has long since disappeared, knowledge of the infamous stone is equally mysterious. However, through research and study of Castambre's diary, I have brought to light a few clues to the stone's whereabouts. The major purpose of the stone's power is to animate inanimate objects, statues, golems, tools, etc. In addition, should the desired object be one already imbued with the power of conversation, the stone will enhance such powers, giving the object, or rather creature, independent thought. Historians claim 
that it was with this stone that Castambre concocted creatures of such deep personalities that, from behind a curtain, it was impossible to differentiate between a person and one of his creations. But how do I capture this ability, I hear thee ask? First, assuming thou hast already discovered the Isle of Fire, no mean feat, I assure thee. Thou must then search for the Pentacle of Rocks, five boulders arranged as though they were vertices in a pentagram. In the center thou shouldst notice a sixth, sixth rock, from which grows a large healthy tree, the Tree of Life. This sixth rock is Castambre's stone. However, finding the stone is only half the battle. For now thou must perform magics beyond the abilities of normal men. With a thou must. Ah, there is a... The page is smudged with dirt here. I cannot make out this text. Why were you reading it? Once the heart has been... Once the heart has been placed within the chest of the creature, the ritual may begin. First, using perhaps the same pick, thou must strike the tree hard enough to draw blood. Blood from a tree questions thee? Aye, I say, for the tree is one of life and energy, collected from the nutrients of the stone, and bleed it does. Some say thou wilt be able to hear the shrieks of pain from Castambre's stone. But that rumor is waning. Thou wilt need enough of the tree's life force to fill a bucket. After the blood has been properly contained, it must be spilled in five spots about the body of the stone creature, as if the creature were Castambre's stone, and the puddles of blood the five rocks of the pentacle. In fact, it is necessary to set down five such small rocks to make the locate to mark the location which the blood must be spilled. Then must thou cast Vas Flam Us, see detachable page, at the end of the volume, setting fire to each of the puddles of fl blood. Uh, let's actually take a quick look at that. It's probably, it's Great Flame something or other, I know that much. Uh, Us is Raise Up. So, Raise Up Great Flame or something? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Following that, following that must be chanted the sacred words gleaned from Castambre's journals, also on detachable page. Now that the creature is enchanted, of course, it will become necessary to instruct it, much as one educates a child. However, a stone golem will learn much more quickly. Why, a page has fallen out of the book! Hey, talk about a detachable page. Uh, let's go ahead and read that. Vas Flam Us. This scroll will permit thee to perform the ritual necessary to either create or reconstruct stone creatures and instill within them the power of thought. First, gather the materials discussed in the previous chapters. After thou hast performed said task, thou shouldst refer back to the scroll and begin. Blood must cover the rocks. Oh, all right. Go do that. Uh, anything up here? Oh, yes, there is. We will need the pick. The pick of the litter. And for good measure. Well, oh. Wasn't quite what I was expecting, but okay. Forgot I did that. Aha! There it is. Hey, a deer! Oh, a deer! Alright, well, let's uh, go ahead and put our Hoe of Destruction away. We need to get out a different item of uh, um, use. Let's go ahead and put down that. It seems that a pick is not needed for that. What are you talking about? Uh, maybe I need to click it on the tree. Don't make me kill you, dear, by the way. Aha! Totally splash more blood on Iolo. Oh, yes, there is also... the wrong button. I think it's... Oh. Lever. Hmm. What could that be? A 
Oh my. That is a that is a great statue. Oh. The bats were attacking me. I, I didn't notice that. I didn't realize that. Uh how are we doing on hit points? Alright, we're okay. Alright, well we don't really care about the main gauche. That is a golden table there. What is this? Uh no, that's a table. A fire doom stav. I hate fire doom staves. However, more important, the death scythe. Oh yeah. Who gets the death scythe? Well, for now, well, actually no, not for now because uh I'm going to be getting something better soon. Um who gets the death scythe? I think that uh, Dupre is going to get the Death Scythe. It is a two-handed weapon. Uh, so who is going to get... You know, let's go ahead and uh, unequip that. Go ahead and uh, give you, Sentry, the uh, Mage Bane. So the reason why I hate the, uh, ma the uh, um, Mage Doom staff is because... Holy crap! Oh, they're doubled up. Oh, wow. Oh. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Wow. Nine glass swords. And look at all of this blood. No idea what this is supposed to be, but uh, it's definitely not cheating. Yes, thank you for that. Thank you for that. It's fantastic. Go ahead and grab these uh, powder kegs as well. Because, you know, why not? Not sure if that uh, magician's wand actually is any good, but uh, we'll leave Spark with it for now. All right, let's go ahead and uh, spill some blood. Alright, and last but not least, I think this should uh, empty out our bucket. Yep, it does. Alright, now we've got that. Um, now we got to cast that spell, but uh, I think we're going to do that in the next episode. See you then, everyone.